Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining the call tonight. Uh, and sunny evening where I am, so uh, I can see the sunshine in some of your photos too. Um, we are hosting several of these events this week in terms of talking about all of the different opportunities that are available. And thank you to all our advisors who are waiting to, um, I'm going to say inspire, but uh, all, for all sorts of opportunities. Um, here, this is my Queen's Guide Award from, uh, we did it when we were 16 in those days, back in the day. And that has um, been something that has created, once I'd done that, I created a whole load of other opportunities for me. So because I was a Queen's Guide, I got my very first job at Boots as a Saturday assistant, um, because the manager's daughter had the Queen's Guide Award and knew what was involved in it. And then because of everything that I'd done in Girl Guiding, I had a job two summers in a row working on a summer camp in Massachusetts in America, uh, which was just the best experience ever. And I taught pioneering, backpacking, mountain climbing, cooking, canoeing, everything that I'd done as a guide. So these opportunities now are stepping stones, I think is probably the right thing to say, for everything that you could possibly want to aspire to and to achieve as you go through your life and what is available now for girls your age is just so much better than what it was when I was as well so um, open up all the possible experiences and make the most of them. Uh, there's a film I don't know if anybody's seen it called Yes Man with Jim Carrey and uh, it has a re really good message that you should say yes to lots of different opportunities, um, you know, with a little bit of careful consideration first sometimes, but be open to those um, opportunities and, and go for it. So I'm gonna hand over to Emma, or a really powerful example of what you can achieve as well when you put your mind to it. Emma is our Assistant Region Chief Commissioner. Have a good evening, folks. Um, and I'll be back again on Thursday for those of you that are here. Okay, have fun. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. Um, so yeah, thank you, Julie, for doing that that introduction. Um, and now I'm going to kind of follow on and do another bit of an introduction, talking about my journey so far, because my journey is particularly relevant to kind of this session for 14 to 18 year olds, um, because my journey, well, this particular part of my journey that I'm on started when I was that age. So I wanted to kind of start by saying, um, this is what my journey started off looking like. Um, it was a pretty normal one. Um, I started in rainbows, went through to brownies and guides. Um, I earned my Baden-Powell Award. I became a young leader. And then um, as well as being a young leader, I was a ranger. Um, until eventually at 18, I became an adult leader. So it was a very, very standard average journey. Um, I, I love my time as a young member, but there was nothing like stand out about it um, until um, as a ranger, my leader, my ranger leader started sending me lots and lots of opportunities. Um, and you can kind of see the selection of them. There was peer ed here, there was advocate. And I would always reply with um, a nice little, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll have a look at it. And I can probably guarantee I never actually did, um, which really frustrates me looking back. Um, but she persevered. She sent me lots and lots and lots of emails um, until this one. And this was sort of in the summer of 2017. And I'd ignored so many emails at this point that I was starting to feel really, really awkward about that. And I thought, I'm just going to have to humor adjust this once. So I'll have to apply just to be able to say, thank you, Sam. Like, I have acknowledged you at least once. Um, so I did. I applied. And I can remember the exact moment that I press submit on the application to join this task and finish group. Um, I was on a, like a really hot, sweaty bus in Marseille. And I remember it exactly. And I swear, like part of my brain knew just how significant a moment that was going to be and kind of retained that memory. Um, and I was lucky, lucky enough to get a place on that task and finish group. Um, I rocked up. Um, I just turned 17. I was still ridiculously shy. I didn't like speaking in front of more than a couple of people, um, but I was really passionate about this UK Parliament Week resource and that kind of helped to bring me out of my shell a little bit and get involved in the discussions. Um, and, and yeah, I 
met some really great people on that day. Um, so my kind of approach of I'm just going to humor my ranger leader once very quickly went to pot um, because as soon as I'd applied for that task and finish group, I got this email, um, which was asking me to apply for action for change. Um, based on my other application, they thought that I'd be really well suited. Um, and I can guarantee if my range leader had sent this opportunity, I'd have done the classic, oh, it sounds interesting, ignore. However, because it was someone from region, um, I felt like kind of really proud that I'd been asked and it was um, way too big of a thing to say no. So I said yes. Um, the best decision I've ever made. Um, I attended Action for Change and I, I rocked up to Wado, not knowing anybody, really shy, um, really nervous. Um, and I left Wado a completely different person. Um, on that Action for Change weekend, I learned so much about girl guiding, um, so much about myself. I grew so much in confidence just over two or three days. Um, and I can kind of pinpoint that to the moment that my sort of confidence and passion for girl guiding and awareness of the wider organization really skyrocketed. Um, so throughout my year on action on action for change, I just became really aware of like girl guiding as a wider organization, all of the um, like social action and advocacy work that was going on. I started following girl guiding on Twitter, um, which was the best thing that I did because I saw opportunities that weren't just being directed to me from my ranger leader. I was seeing them straight from girl guiding. Um, so when this came up, uh, I decided to apply. I was incredibly lucky to get a place on the panel in 2018 um, just before I went off to university and this came along at just the right time because I truly believe that if I'd have stayed on that average journey just as a young leader um, I'd have left girl guiding when I went off to university and who knows when or even if I'd have come back but having these other opportunities like action for change and advocate um, just really gave me that extra thing to, to keep involved with and keep passionate about. Um, and that then brings us on to where I am now. Um, so throughout my time as an advocate, I just grew to love girl guiding and using my voice in the organization even more. Um, and as my time on advocate was starting to kind of come to the end of my term, I knew that I was wanting to, to do something else afterwards. And I didn't just want sort of my involvement to fizzle out. So, I was really actively aware of looking out for something that I wanted to do. Um, so when I saw that Julie was wanting a young assistant, um, I kind of knew that it was calling for me. It had my name on it. Um, and despite a little bit of um, nerves about applying, whether I was just slightly too young, um, whether I had enough experience, I kind of a bit the bullet, I applied and it has been the best decision ever to date. It's literally changed my life. All of this journey has changed my life, both in and out of guiding, which is why I would encourage anybody um, to, to take up the opportunities. My life would be completely different if it wasn't for, for girl guiding. Um, so yeah, to the ranger leaders that are here um, or watching this recording later, um, please do keep bombarding your girls with the emails, <laughs> with the opportunities, because my ranger leader did. And as much as you think they might be um, kind of being completely ignored hopefully one will just find the right person um, at the right time and it will change their life um, and to the 14 to 18 year olds already if you're here if you're watching this um, you're doing better than I was because when I was your age I wouldn't be here I'd have ignored the email um, so well done for, for being here but yeah please do when uh, opportunities come your way as Julie said, um, exercise a little bit of caution and do think about it. But saying yes, um, just like I did on that hot, sweaty bus in Marseille, um, might be the thing that, that changes your life. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing all of our fabulous opportunities that we've got with you. Um, so yeah, um, I will now hand over to, I will stop sharing, and our first speaker. Oh is um, Rose. So Rose is gonna talk about the Arts Award. Um, so over to Rose. Thanks very much, Emma. Thank you for that. Um, 
The Arts Award, I don't know whether many of you have heard about it, but uh, basically, I'll just give you a quick resume. Um, it's self-explanatory, really. It's all about the arts. And my idea, or if we can get you involved, is for you to spread the idea of the Arts Award within your leaders and within the units that you're working and also to make it beneficial to you. Some of you may already know about the Arts Award and how it works because you've either used it in school or you may have come across it in some units in guiding. Um, however, at Girl Guiding Northwest, we've actually been using the Arts Award since 2017 um, not that everybody's aware of it, so we would like to spread it a bit further. That's where you become involved. Um, we'd like you to be ambassadors for us girls, to take part um, in, as your rangers, young leaders, leaders in training, possibly to open up the Arts Award to any of the girls that you're working with within the units you're working from rainbows right up to the age of 25, because that's when, that's the period we can actually do the Arts Award in, five to 25, so it's quite a spread. Um, there's different ages and different levels of the Arts Award. Um, for Discover, for example, that's mainly, uh, we range that towards the uh, rainbows. Um, explore is where you expand your knowledge. Bronze, silver and gold come next. And if any of you are arty, you can do things for your gold award. And would you believe you can get up to 16 new cast points for the gold award if you actually achieve it. So it's quite a lot from what I've been told to uh, put towards your entry into university. We're looking for future leaders, so that could be you. I'd love to see a lot of you girls stay within guiding, continue on the role and the exploratory way you're going about guiding at the moment and having a go at things that you like. We can assist with the Arts Award from start to finish. Whether it's something you wish to do personally or whether it's with a group, how about letting your leader know and they can contact region and we will assist in getting you started. With all awards, as you can probably imagine, there's a cost, but lots of regions do help with this cost. So just ask because you never know, you might be able to get some help in that way. We do have 27 advisors across our region so contact us girls and we will help you. If any of you are doing the Arts Awards already, I'd love to hear from you because we as a region have just been made a champion centre by who run our Arts Award, which is quite um, a nice achievement, shall we say. So to enable us to continue in this way, we need to encourage more participation. And I look forward to you contacting us, me, and working with you all in the future. I hope that it's given you some ideas about what we do with the Arts Award. It's not just painting, it's digital, it's poetry, it's pottery, it's camera, it's film. So there's lots of things you can get involved with. We've got a number of things coming up, one in Stockport, which I can't tell you about yet, but it's an interesting one, which we have got involved in. And in Southport, we're going to do a snail trail for all girls to get involved in. So they're going to do their Discover Award. They're going to find different snails around Southport Town Centre which is in the process of being arranged at the moment. So good luck, girls, on whatever you choose to do. But as I say, if you want to get involved with the Arts Award, email region, they'll contact me and I'll be in touch. Have a great evening. 
I've got to go because I'm going to another meeting like some of the other ladies. But I believe I'm passing on to our Inspire member, Megan. And she will talk to you now all about a lovely ne your next steps. Good luck to you all. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Rose. Is it my turn now? Yeah. So Meg is going to talk now about Inspire. Um, and if anyone has any questions for Rose, then um, if you let us know, and we will make sure that they get to Rose and she can uh, she can answer them um, when she has has the time. But yeah, over to Meg now. Thank you. Okay. So in the spirit of taking opportunities when they're handed to you, I thought I too would share some embarrassing photos of me taking opportunities as a girl guide growing up. So here we have little Meg. I grew up down south, I'm from Southampton originally, and I think sort of my message, not only join Inspire because it's fabulous, but Girl Guiding is a really huge community and no matter where you go, sort of growing up, whether you live in the same place your entire life or you move from place to place, stick in guiding, don't give up on it because I thought my Girl Guiding journey was over when I turned 18 and it wasn't, obviously I'm back. Um, but it took me a little while to sort of find where my place was with girl guiding and I think for me that is I mean I'm a, I'm a leader now but also I think for me that's inspire but I thought I'd show you some moments in my sort of young life where girl guiding provided me with the opportunity to have the confidence to just kind of go for it and I think the first one for me was being carnival queen at the age of 11 and for me that was the first moment I was able to kind of put my hat in the ring I didn't think I'd get it I thought I'll go for it anyway I got it. I was really, really proud of myself. Um, I then had the confidence to go on and be in this huge girl guiding show where we were singing and dancing on stage and it was the whole of Hampshire. I regret the costume now, but it was a good moment for me. I was a young leader. I stayed in guiding. I didn't want to leave. I was in the carnivals. I was in everything. I wanted to be in everything. And then when I went to university, I thought that was me done. I was done with girl guiding. I thought, you know, I've I've aged out of it. I don't really want to be a leader at university. I'm ready to move on now. However, I always say you don't leave girl guiding. You don't. You're always going to be a girl guide, no matter whether you volunteer or not. This is me in a carnival that I didn't necessarily know I was going to be part of because my sister had double booked herself and I had to stand in her place. That's me age 20. And for me, at that point, girl guiding was already over for me. But instantly, as soon as someone needed to stand in, I was right there. And I think that's when I realised actually after university, I'm going back. And it did. And when I came Has Meg froze for everybody else or is that just? Yeah, okay, hopefully. Oh. oh. No, I think Meg might have frozen properly. Meg, if you are still there, then maybe try turning your video off, that, that might help. No. Oh no, Meg's gone. Um, okay, what we will do is we will move on to the next person and then when Meg comes back, she can pick up from where she's left off um, and hopefully she will be able to get on, no problems. Um, so after Meg, we are moving on to Beth and Emma who are going to talk about D of E. Um, so I hope you don't mind that quick uh, change of schedule, but yeah, we will move back on to Meg as soon as she, um, she reappears and after Beth and Emma. So over to you two. Hello, so I'm Emma and this is Beth and we're heavily involved with Duke of Edinburgh um, 
I did Duke of Edinburgh myself when I was at school and did my bronze, silver and nearly completed my gold. I left to uni and that was unfortunately um, the end of my gold career. But it has led me on to lots of opportunities. My, I did my um, Duke of Edinburgh with a youth group rather than through Girl Guiding because we didn't have the opportunity back then to do DV with our Girl Guiding unit. But as an adult, I wanted to offer back some of the skills I'd gained with Duke of Edinburgh's. And so I joined a ranger unit in Cumbria and gained my mountain leader qualification with a view of then running Duke of Edinburgh expeditions for my girls in my ranger unit, which then quickly blossomed into running them for the county and then becoming the region advisor and ultimately led to a career change. So I then, on the back of my DV career with Girl Guiding, left the NHS, became a freelance outdoor instructor, and now work for one of the country's biggest Duke of Edinburgh providers in the country. So it certainly opened up a lot of opportunities for me. Um, so a little bit about the Duke of Edinburgh award itself. It's been in the press an awful lot with the recent passing of Prince Philip. So it's been running for about 65 years. Um, has always been in a very similar format. You have three different levels, bronze, silver and gold. So you can start your bronze when you're in year nine, which is 13 going on to 14, which if you're a ranger leader is a way a really good way of capturing some of the older guides and keeping their interests so you don't lose them as they move on from guiding into rangers because you, you kind of ease them in on that journey. Each section is then subdivided into four parts and so you have a physical, a skill, a volunteering and the expedition section and then at gold you have a further section called the residential. So all of these sections have to be done for a certain length of time. So it fits quite well with Queen's Guide. Certainly at the gold level, there's a lot of overlap. And if you have girls doing the Arts Award, the Arts Award will count towards their skill section. So you can be working for a number of different badges and using the same hours and same activities to tick off different sections, which is quite nice. So the at gold, the Queen's Guide Gold Expedition. Queen's Guide Expedition will meet the criteria for a, a Gold Duke of Edinburgh Expedition. Um, if you have Girl Guide members that are young leaders, then their volunteering within your unit will count towards their volunteering section in the award. So it basically averages out that they need to do about an hour a week on average over a certain amount of months. And that increases with each level as to the length of time. So at bronze, it's three and six months and they get to choose which one that they want to do the longer section on. So if they're already playing hockey in an after school club that's gonna last for a number of months, they might choose that to be their physical. Um, at silver, they need to choose its one of the sections is nine months and then at gold one of the sections is a year long and the other two sections are six months so it does get progressively harder um, which is really a good way of sort of like showing that the young person has developed likewise the expedition gets harder as they go along so at bronze it's a two-day one-night expedition in their local area and they do you train the young people up so that they're then independent and can walk the route with minimum supervision from you. You meet them at different points along the way and the young person in a group of between four and seven carry everything that they need to be self-sufficient and get to their campsite, put the tents up and have a really nice time and then carry on the next day. At Silver you do a practice and then a qualifier and the qualifier is a three day, two night expedition and should be somewhere a little bit more remote from where you live. So maybe in the next county or somewhere like the Yorkshire 
Yorkshire Moors or up into the, we go to the Dales from Cumbria because we live in wild country, which is where you're supposed to do your gold. So we try to go further away to make it a little bit easier in some respects. And then at gold, you meant to go to quite adventurous countryside. So Snowdonia, the Lake District, the Peak District, Brecon Beacons, Black Mountains, those kind of areas. And that's a four day, three night expedition. And you have this, a similar length of time to do a practice as well. So it's quite a big undertaking, um, progressively harder, longer distances, and obviously a bit more stuff that you have to carry. But that's enough from me. I'm going to hand you over to Bethany, who is currently completing her gold and is probably a very good advocate as to why you should do your D of E. Um, D of E gives a lot back to you. So you put the work in, but you do get a lot out of it. So it teaches you how to be resilient. So when things go wrong on your expeditions, you have the confidence to bounce back and carry on and figure out what's gone wrong and it gives you that independence um, to be confident and you're left alone during the day and you got to get there yourself it's your responsibility and so it's that independence at that age you don't really get given anywhere else. Um, Do you want to explain what went wrong on your gold expedition? Uh, we had a girl dislocate her knee on the top of a mountain in Wales and we had to call out mountain rescue um, and they weren't sure if they were going to get a helicopter to her because of the fog but we managed to get it straight and get her wrapped up in like lots of sleeping bags and put a tent over her until mountain rescue came and took her off the mountain um, and it went very well she got her knee put back in place and she was like walking within the next few days but if it wasn't for DUV and like having that confidence, we might not have been able to deal with it. And then she could have had serious knee injury that she could have carried for the rest of her life. Um, it gives you like a chance to just get away with your friends for a few days and sitting around the campsite, like just making your own meals. They're not the nicest, but you can make them good and they taste good after a long day. Um, and just hang out with your friends. It's a lot of fun. And you get a chance to travel to other places you might not have otherwise. So you can actually do your expedition abroad. Um, we didn't do that, but it's an option. And it sounds really good, but you can also do your residential for gold abroad. So we had a girl go to a turtle sanctuary. Yeah, so one of our uh, girls who's doing her gold, she was interested in marine biology. So for her residential, she elected to go to Greece and volunteered at a turtle sanctuary for a couple of weeks. You only need to do five days, but she thought I'm out there. I might as well do a bit longer. Um, we have had another girl going to Switzerland and learn to train as a ski instructor as her residential. And then we've had people going to Peru participating with the National Geographic in butterfly surveys. So we've had people going all over the world on their residentials. Um, so they can be really, really fun, but obviously fun can sometimes incur costs. So then we try to factor in that they need to do some fundraising in towards it. So it is having that conversation with the young person that, yeah, you might want to do this, but how realistic is it really? Um, yeah, DUV isn't just a long walk. You do get skills that you'll carry for you for the rest of your life. Other things that we find that the DUV is really useful for is for highlighting you on your CV when you're applying to go to university. It doesn't unfortunately count for any UCAS points. It did used to and that, that has stopped. But a lot of employers and universities are looking for people with a wider range of soft skills. So it's certainly something that when you girls are progressing through it and we try to encourage them to, when they're writing their personal descriptions, rather than just saying, I've done my bronze or I did my gold D of e, actually pick out some of the pertinent points from it and say, you know, like with Bethany, with her um, incident with the helicopter, what she didn't actually say was while I was supervising her, we were remote supervising and I was an hour away when this happened. So by the time 
we got to where they they were with the injury mountain rescue had actually come so the girls had coordinated dealing with the casualty keeping the casualty warm it was september it snowed so they had to keep themselves safe they had to plan an alternative route because they realized that they couldn't get to their destination it was on their final day they didn't have time after ellen had been removed to get to their destination so they had to replan their route on the fly they had to negotiate with the assessor that they changed their route and that she was happy that it was going to meet their requirements they did all of this yes we trained them but they put that training into place and that has then led on to confidence now bethany's planning holidays and trips traveling independently whereas if she hadn't done this i'm not sure she would have been undertaking some of the ambitious things that she is planning and that was something that she could highlight when she was going to university interviews that she's got this resilience she's got this sort of capability to think and problem solve on her own and that really does make a difference when you're trying to sell yourself and stand out from a crowd in in the world of short spaces in universities um definitely if you've got young girls going through it we've had girls wanting to go to vet college so they've used their volunteering to build a powers towards the vet college and then they've used the residential to go on a more specific vet related course that's then boosted their hours towards vet college so it can be really good at influencing your future careers so i think that's probably enough about dev <laughs> Thank you very much, both of you. Um, I think what we'll do is any questions we'll get to at the end so that all of the kind of the talking chunks are together. Um, so thank you very much. And I'm sure if people have got any questions, um, they will sit on those uh, until the end. But we will go back to Meg. Um, Meg's managed to rejoin us. Um, so thank you both. And yes, back to Meg for Inspire. Yeah, sorry about that. Our internet went down. I'm currently <laughs> no. I don't suppose I could be made a host so I can screen share again. Oh, I can't do that. Um, I've just done it. You're also, yeah. I think. Thank you. Okay. So Inspire is a brand new community within Girl Guiding. I went to say section then, but it's not a section. It's a community. And this is for 18 to 30 year olds. So you guys are 14 to 18. Some of you might be 18 and you will be able to join us now if you would like to, which would be great. For some of you, this will be your next step, something to look forward to in the next few years. But we will welcome you with open arms when it is your time to join us. I'm just going to quickly go through what Inspire is and then I'm going to have to dash off. But if you have any questions at all, that you are welcome to get in contact with me. If you go on the region website, you'll be able to find my email. So Girl Guiding Inspire is designed to help as many young women as possible in allowing you guys to develop into empowered, independent women, which I guess is the theme for today. We'll support you in being able to be, be part of this community, this program. There's, I mean, there's no set program. It's a community that is completely up to you. It's sort of guiding for adults essentially there's no set things that you need to do there's no set meetings you need to attend it's sort of flexible girl guiding for people that are leaders that want to stay within this big community of young members or for people that actually volunteering's not for you like I said for me I thought my girl guiding journey was over when I went to university but if Inspire had been available I think I would have been an Inspire member I would have sort of dipped in and out I would have done girl guiding as a young adult so like I said it's not a section or a program it's a range of opportunities for fun networking personal challenge and personal development members can build their own journeys depending on the skills they want to develop and choose the experiences they want we've been running the 1830 community for two years but it was relaunched under the new name of inspire in november last year so it is a brand new community we've run a couple of events well, we've run a, one event so far we've got one coming up we'd love to have some more people on board with us inspire will be the place to come for all 18 to 30 year old women in the uk and will provide opportunities to help to you develop into empowered young women 
we'll, we'll support each other to build supportive and fun communities. We'll help ourselves to find our place within Girl Guiding in the wider world, and we will lead this together. Inspire's there to provide new opportunities to connect with others, to learn, to go on adventures, to have fun. It's a safe and inclusive space, it's accessible, it's women only, There's a, there'll be a diverse range of young women there. And it's a flexible framework for taking part in girl guiding. It's supportive. You can take part in new challenges. We'll work closely with other individuals that you'll be, or opportunities that you'll be learning about this evening. We can work with DV, we can work with Express, etc. It's a really, really fabulous place that's completely flexible. Now I'm going to show you how Inspire works. So I'll stop sharing that and reshare. Sorry if I'm speaking really fast. I do actually have to dip off in a second. Um, so Inspire works under seven different themes, oops, sorry, seven different pathways and two different themes. The two themes are just for me. So like I said, Inspire is sort of independent girl guiding. You can do it as part of an Inspire community and that works at sort of division, county and region level. So you can work with other young women to do adult girl guiding with them, I suppose. But equally, if that's not your cup of tea, you can do Inspire just for you. You can do Inspire independently. And the other theme is learning and awards. So for example, taking part in the Queen's Guide, taking part in the Duke of Edinburgh, all of these play a huge part in what Inspire is. And then we have the seven pathways. So first pathway is adventure and challenge. And that, honestly, it's so flexible Inspire. That could be anything that could be going to an activity center. It could be playing an outdoor adventure, whether that's for yourself independently, or whether that's with a unit that you volunteer with or even, I suppose, with a local Inspire group, or it could be leading an outdoor adventure, perhaps you work at an outdoor activity centre, perhaps you work at one of our girl guiding activity centres, it's completely flexible. There's Beyond the UK, and that dips into all the opportunities that are available for you within girl guiding to travel overseas, whether that's visiting one of the international headquarters, whether that's doing your Duke of Edinburgh expedition abroad, whether that's sort of doing an international camp or an international event, it could be anything. There's events experience, that's the third one of our pathways. It could be volunteering at a festival, it could be running an event in your local area as a leader or yeah, as an 18 year old leader or upwards. It could be organizing an overnight trip. Sharing skills is another one of our pathways. Sharing skills, I mean, we've been speaking about this at Region. I mean, that obviously works if you want to be a volunteer, but if you don't want to be a volunteer equally within your workplace or within the people that you interact with within Inspire, just sharing the skills that you have as an individual with other people, I think is so important within Inspire, whether that's as a girl guiding volunteer or not leading the way, sharing again, sharing your skills with others. Perhaps you want to go, gain the Girl Guiding Leadership Qualification and become a leader within a unit. Perhaps you want to work with other Girl Guiding members, be that adults or children. You want to be, a, like I said, be a leader. And finally, developing others. Being part of this Inspire community is all about developing others, developing yourself alongside developing others. Whether you want to be a volunteer, perhaps you want to be a trainer if you don't want to work with children perhaps you want to do you, perhaps you want to be a leader it's completely flexible it's completely up to you there are so many opportunities within inspire to do what you want to do as an adult member of girl guiding and it's really exciting especially because we're in our early stages our members are sort of part of developing what inspire looks like at our region and i mean even at national level as well so we are really excited to have you guys come, board, come on board, whether you are 18 already or whether you will be 18 soon and sort of hear what you want Inspire to look like, hear your voice coming through because if you're 14, by the time you come up to Inspire, you could be the one taking over from me. I can't be around forever. So I wanna see who the next sort of Inspire leaders are gonna be. 
and where you're going to take inspire after I hand it over to somebody else because it is really really fabulous it's one of those things that has sort of kept me going during lockdown and it's lovely to have this community to speak to whether you're old enough to be in inspire and or not to whether you're doing something else and inspire something that you're looking forward to it is fabulous and I hope whatever opportunity you pick up after today you sort of take it by both hands and really really enjoy it I'm gonna have to dip off I'm not sure who I'm who am I passing over to um over to Claire next so thank you so much Meg that was really interesting um and yeah definitely even if you are only just 14 um those four years will fly by and it's really nice knowing what you've got to look forward to when you turn 18 so thank you very much Meg um thank you very much Thank you. And over to Claire, who is going to talk a little bit more about the Queen's Guide Award. Hello. Um, I'm going to apologise in advance if I freeze. Um, my internet is not fantastic. Um, so I apologise if I freeze. I will hopefully be back very quickly. Um, so um, I think Caroline's going to share a slide with a bit of information on. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, basically, the Queen's Guide is... But it's for 16 to 25 year olds. When I say that, I mean you've gotten to a 26th birthday. Um, and it takes about, it takes three years roughly to complete. Um, and you can have a break in that if you want. So you have a break of up to a year. So it could take four years with a year's break. Um, it's an amazing challenge. It takes um, a lot of effort, a lot of organization. Um, and you, but you learn so much along the way and you get loads of help so if you're interested in doing it you don't have to do it all by yourself like when you first look at it it might seem a bit overwhelming but actually what you can do is you can really break it down and you can get someone to be a mentor for you so like so it might be someone in your county someone you know who's there to help you organize and support you through it and they're there to give you advice and give you suggestions on what you can do on these different bits um and the reason for that is, is because there's five parts to it so the main part, the most important part is your service in guiding. Um, so for lots of people, um, that part of that is kind of regularly volunteering at a unit. Um, but actually, so like I volunteered with my brownies when I did mine. Um, but actually there's lots of different parts to it. Um, and there's lots of other bits. It's not just the volunteering. Um, it could just be a different thing. So um, it could be that you volunteer in um, with something like, gold which is an amazing opportunity um volunteering at a campsite at your local campsite um or like even being someone like one of us like being an advisor um in your local area um also like you want to part of the service and guiding is also like volunteering at specific events um so for example i was a first aid at a brownie camp um and that was my thing but it can be anything first aid is quite a scary thing to do when you're 18 um but it is one of those really things you can do you could also you help organize events as part of it and also like do an action plan so like emma mentioned at the beginning she mentioned about a um her action for change that would have counted as part of her service and guiding um and then we've also got Oh, and doing a challenge as well for your service and guiding. <laughs> There's lots of parts to that bit. So that's why it seems quite overwhelming. An outdoor challenge. So that's like what Emma was saying. That's the bit that can overlap with the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, so that's what I did. My outdoor challenge overlapped my Duke of Edinburgh. Um, but if you're doing that, sometimes Duke of Edinburgh assessors don't really understand what you're asking them to sign off. So just be really aware of what you're asking your, your goal advisor to sign, um, your goal assessor to sign off when you're doing it personal skill development so that can be anything at all it's a year-long project a year-long thing where you can have developed something that you're interested in um and it could be something brand new or it could be something that you're already doing and you just want to get better <laughs> did i freeze sorry um, um yeah, personal skill development, anything you want to do, you've got, a, it's a year long thing. Community action. So you need a bit of research on, so, on something you're really passionate about um, and um, also kind of do a project. 
and then also a residential event um which can be like we take a new opportunity um some people i know did their residential when they went um to a world scout um a moot or jamboree they got that signed off then um there's a lot there um, i appreciate it. there's an awful lot um but you the whole point is that there, you always have someone to help you through it if you're interested in doing it and you want and you don't have someone in your county because only about eight counties in northwest have a um a queen's guide advisor if it's something you're interested in and you want someone who talk you through it and help you out with it just send me an email so i put my email address on this slide so it's really easy for you guys to see it if you're interested send me an email and i will answer any questions you've got it seems really it does seem a bit overwhelming at the first but it is amazing like i would 100 recommend it and um you get like a really i've got this my badge here probably can't see it this is my everyday badge. So this is on my badge tab. But I also have a really, really fancy one, which is um, which comes out for special occasions because it's very expensive and you don't want to lose it. Um, but I got a, you get an amazing opportunity. You get to have an amazing day out when you finish it. Like I would recommend it. It's the best, it's the highest of wooden guiding. It, it has to be an effort, but it does overlap with so many other things. Like if you're doing any of the other things, like it will count as part of your Queen's Guide. Like, please, please, please take it up. It's such an amazing thing to do and you will not regret it. Um, I want to go quickly so I don't ever run. And I think Lydia is next to talk about the Young Leader qualification. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. And yes, over to Lydia. Thank you. So I'm talking about the Young Leader, Young Leadership qualification. So I started volunteering as a young leader as part of my bronze DV when I was 14 uh, and that was at a rainbow unit which was the rainbow unit I went to when I was tiny and that progressed on to using my volunteering as a young leader through my bronze then my silver and then my gold DV um, so a bit of a crossover with the DV opportunity these things really do cross over they're brilliant so I was a young leader at first a rainbow unit and then a brownie unit and when you first start out as a young leader, it can seem quite overwhelming to have a room of 25 to seven year olds just running everywhere. But the, the leadership team are always brilliant and they really gently ease you into the responsibility. So that could start off with leading some games like dodgeball. And then you start to develop into high levels of responsibility. So you start to lead activities in small groups and then on to the whole unit. And then as well, you can, or I found that I took up different areas such as helping young, young members with their badge work and then helping them if they had any problems whilst you're there, you increasingly, you basically find a, a whole community and a group that you can really fit in with. And that group becomes an amazing space for you to, to feel safe in developing your confidence and you really begin to, to find that you can lead things and that it is scary, but it is possible. So I went on then to lead larger events and then went on to bring my own interest into it. So I quite, I'm quite interested in environmental things. So I started to come up with my own ideas, share them with the leadership team, and we would then run those activities in things like, um, wildflowers or to do with plastics particularly with the future girl campaign in previous years so you can really bring your own interest into it and inspire people with with your interests and ideas as well as being able to provide the girl guiding program and to be really involved in that because you do increasingly become part of the leadership team in terms of planning as well so you really get to it's quite an interesting change to go from a young member to then being part of the team that's delivering everything that you were in receipt of when you were younger. And it's, it's, it's a, a strange change to begin with, but it's really, really enjoyable. And there's so much room to grow in it. So when I started out at 14, I was incredibly nervous and just wasn't great, found it quite overwhelmed to begin with, but you can grow in that environment. And particularly when you've been involved in Girl Guiding previously, you know it's a, a, a safe environment that you can develop in and feel really confident in. So 
I would definitely say that it's a brilliant example of an opportunity you can take to develop soft skills which going into the world of employment and going towards university are incredibly important and to be able to develop those skills whilst actually really enjoying yourself and being part of an amazing opportunity is just brilliant it doesn't feel like work at all um, so I would definitely say that I developed my confidence I became a lot better at communicating if you can tell a group of, of 20 tiny kids what to do and they listen then that's pretty impressive and I was also able to develop my creativity which I didn't think would be something I would so I was able to like I say come up with different activities that I wanted to share and share my interests so as well as those soft skills doing the young leadership qualification being a young leader went on to actually allow me to access particular things like my DV awards and then has now given me the confidence to go on to be a leader in training for the adult leadership qualification, as well as very much supporting my university application and my application for jobs. So a way you can further develop the skills that you learn as a young leader is you can take the young leadership qualification, which is a particular programmed award that allows you to target particular areas of your development as a, a young leader. So for example, you can learn more about what being a leader involves and about girl guiding more generally, which can be a great way to learn more about what girl guiding offers as you transfer from being a young member into an adult member. You can also learn about different types of leadership styles so you can be a brilliant leader for your unit and for units going forward that you may want to be involved in. You can also learn greater about the logistics of planning and about how to run good and safe sessions and it's great to see just how much you can do with Girl Guide and it's not just following the program there is so much that you can do with units and it's a real chance like I've said to share your interests and to support other young young leaders and other leaders to share their own and make a really diverse and interesting program. It's also possible to learn more about local guiding. I know that sometimes the different structures of districts and divisions can all seem quite strange when you're a young member, um, but through completing the young leadership qualification, you can begin to understand that more and understand just how great the community is that you are part of through guiding. And the different sections of the young leadership qualification can also contribute to the adult leadership qualification. So if it's something you're really interested in, then you're already part way through doing it. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend being a young leader because it's a real opportunity to step out of your shell. It definitely gave me the confidence to go for more things and just to try things out and definitely is a great one for communication. Um, even just speaking to parents and just speaking to the kids and allowing yourself to be to be understood is, is really great and something that I've definitely been able to use moving forward towards the university. Um, so yeah, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask towards the end, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Yeah, I think you summed it up really perfectly then. Um, the communication and the confidence is, is definitely key. Um, so thank you. And next up we have Chloe and Chloe is going to talk about peer education. Hi everyone. I don't have lots to talk about peer ed because we're going to do one of the activities from the peer ed speak. So, I don't like watching myself on spotlight. I'm just going to turn myself back to Carol. So peer ed is, so it's from 14 to 25 and you, there's currently no trainings, but you go to a training weekend. It's either residential or two days in county, region, or we can send you somewhere where they're doing trainings and you go and train in a topic. So currently there's three topics you can be trained in. So there's Think Resilient, which is like what I'm trained in. So it's more being about being resilient and teaching brownies and guides and rangers how to be more resilient and how not to become overstressed and deal with different life situations. You've got Breaking Free, which I can't quite remember what it's about, but I want to say it's stereotypes. And then there's Three B and Me, which again, I can't remember what it is, but it's the one before Think Resilient, so I never trained in that one. So there's three topics. There's a new, brand new one coming out in November currently. That's exclusive information. I found that out the other day, which is coming out in November. Not quite sure what the main topics are going to be yet, but that will be a new one that hopefully 
will be the next training that we can take part in because of COVID. So that will be good fun. It, you get to go into different Brownie Guide and Ranger units. So currently, in I know in my county, I've visited a few in different divisions and different districts in my county because not everyone becomes a peer educator. So you don't actually have that many in your county. So you get to know different leaders and girls in your units, in the units. And I've got some more information here. So to become a peer educator, there will be information about trainings coming out once we've got them organised. We're currently in process of planning some for end of this year, beginning of next year to get the ball rolling. And then there's also an e-learning on Girl Guiding for leaders and girls to take part in. So you know a bit more about what it is and what you're signing up to. But if you don't want to sign up, you can still do the e-learning. So I'm going to do one of the activities from the Think Resilient Activity Book. So you get a nice activity book as a peer educator. Um, so we're going to do the directed medication, med, not medication, meditation, because it's one of my favourite activities from it. So if you're all in a comfy position, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes if you'd like to, because it, then you can imagine your place better. And I'm just going to read through the script that it gives you. So it gives you all the activities in a script and we'll just go through the activity and then that'll be me done. So if you're all in a comfy position, we'll start off. Let any tension go and relax your shoulders until they are loose. Become aware of your breathing and begin to slow it down by saying to yourself, slowly breathe in, slowly breathe out. Slowly breathe in, slowly breathe out. Concentrate on my voice as you think of the space you are in. Feel yourself in this quiet space. Now build a wall around your space. See the wall in your mind. It is a high, strong wall. In the wall, there is a secret door. It is painted in your favourite colour. Slowly open the door. Behind it is a safe and secret place which feels warm and inviting. Enter through the door, making sure that you shut the door behind you. Look around your space and find something you would like to sit or lie on. A bed, a sofa, a soft rug, maybe some smooth grass, some warm white sand. Pick where you want to sit and head over to it. As you sit down on the comfortable and soft surface, you can feel yourself relax. You let yourself sink into the surface. As you sink, your whole body becomes light, calm and peaceful. As you're sitting and relaxing, you notice a light breeze blowing. It gently moves your hair and touches your face. You are at a perfect temperature and feel calm and peaceful. Take a deep breath as the breeze gently blows around you. You may find yourself drifting off in this space, and that's okay. You feel relaxed and still and safe. You're enjoying sitting in this place, and you feel yourself getting lighter and lighter as you relax more and more. Get ready now to leave your space in the gentle breeze. In your mind, you will gently stir and stretch your body. When you're ready, you, you will picture yourself rising up from whether you're sitting or lying and stretch your body again. You make your way to the secret door, open it and let yourself out, shutting the door behind you. As you listen to my voice, you are slowly bringing yourself back to the screen. Stretch your body and then relax. As I begin to count slowly to five, very slowly open your eyes. One, two, three, four. Five. Now stand up, stretch your muscles and relax. So I like that activity because it you get the girls, you've got, done some of the previous activities and you do this one around about near the end-ish before the final activity and the girls, they've come in all hyper from, a, from just starting brownies or guides or rangers and then you do a meditation, not a medication, and it just brings them all back into the room and they all realise what they've been doing and what they've been learning about. And they go home and tell their parents what they've been learning and how they've learned to become more resilient. And then they pass on these skills to other people on how they can be more resilient and less stressful. Um, yeah, so peer education. Thank you, Chloe. Um, yeah, I tried out peer education for the first time during the lockdown actually I had a peer educator come to my guide unit and it was it was really great and again one of the opportunities that my ranger leader sent me way back when was 
was peer ed and I and I ignored it um, and I really wish I hadn't um, so thank you for, for sharing that hopefully lots more people will um, will know what it is and take it up um, so we're gonna oh sorry Chloe. I only did it I signed up for my Queen's Guard as a residential and then I've become coordinator now yeah just how everything works out um, so thank you we will move on to M now and M is going to talk to us about motivate um, so there you are M Hi, I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Uh, um, can you see that? Cool. Thank yeah. you. So, um, hi, my name's Em and I'm here to talk to you about the Motivate Project, which is one of the projects I'm involved with with Girl Guiding. And it's all about getting young girls involved in sport and more involved in like being active, being exercising regularly and just taking care of the health so that we kind of start those habits early so that they continue those on for later life. And so basically there are two parts to it. So you start by doing your sports young leaders training, which can either be, it's kind of like the, you can either go on a residential. So I went on a residential and you go for like two days, you receive all your training. We stayed in a hotel, we went out and the night was really good fun. Or you can just do it at one, they used to, sometimes they do it as days on when you go and do like all your training for the other things. And that's basically like you go there, you go, it's all other girls who are also involved in girl guiding who are around your age. It's like obviously the target age group for this night, 14 to 18. And you go and you receive your training all about what you have to do to carry out your sports things, all about doing the risk assessments, about how to use the equipment, because each county gets a massive bag of all the sporting equipment we can use for all our sessions, which is really fun. And it's all just about you get to connect with new people. I made loads of new friends when I went online. And it's just a really good way to like, A, receive your training so that when you go out and deliver your sessions, you've definitely got the qualifications and the skills, but also about meeting new people. And it's just a really fun overall experience. And then the second part is more about going back into the community and back to your units and units in your local area to deliver the sessions that you've been trained to do. So it's you do during just normal guiding meetings, you deliver a sports bait session and it can be whatever you want literally I've done so many different things we did like cheerleading with the rainbows or like we did yoga with the rangers obviously you can adapt it to who you're doing it with the age range and it's all about being able to assess a the space you're in because different units meet different places the the guy the girl guys you're working with and it's all about adapting it and you can do the sessions can range from like five minutes to the whole like hour long meeting it just depends and you can do so many different things and it's just really good fun and it means that not only that you're like obviously gaining those skills that are really useful for you as an individual and through going through girl guiding and as Lydia was kind of saying with the young leader qualification it's about learning to be able to have those skills that kind of help with university applications with like employability and stuff but you also know that you're helping the girls get involved in sport which is such an important message because a lot of girls drop out of sport and it's really our job to encourage and make sure that they don't because it's so important that they stay active and we encourage encourage those habits young so that they keep them going so what is this one leader so this is kind of just what I was saying but you get to do you go to your free training session where it'll either be a residential or one of the days and then it will just teach you all the skills so we're not going to send you out unprepared into these meetings you'll know what you've got to do and you'll receive a motivate pack which will just contain all the information you need like session ideas how to do a risk assessment all that and then you get your t-shirt your little rucksack like all the goodies that make you so you can wear it around and be like I was part of this project all the travel expenses for everything is paid for like you don't incur any cost from this is all paid for by Sport England I think and it's really good it's very easy and we want to make it as easy as possible for everyone to get involved and then the badge one of the most important parts of anything you have to deliver two sports sessions to get your badge and after every session you just fill out a survey online to be like who which session you like which unit you delivered it to how many people there were and like the rough activity you did so that we can kind of track that and see what's going on and then once you've done two of those you get to then um um, get your badge and so on your uniform which is obviously very exciting and then um every sort of like six months they send out a bigger survey that you can they either email to you or you get through the post which is all about how you're feeling about getting involved in that project and they kind of use that research to kind of promote it to more people and see how we can improve the project and go forward with it so what do the units get out of the project obviously we get the free sports sessions and you'll get 
the access to the kit bags that the, we can just text and get it for your county and you can use it and it's got all the equipment it's got like I was doing one at the weekend and I found there's so much stuff in there there's like a whistle code there was like a cricket bat at the bottom of it you'll find there's so much stuff in them and the motivate part will go to the unit so that everyone's prepared everyone knows what to do and we can all as a unit work together the unit that sends you so that you can coordinate and make sure you can deliver sports sessions to the unit that you come from and also you can then go out and deliver it to more in the county and then it's all just about like how will the counties benefit obviously like you can go to not just your units but you can expand into your county so that all the girls get the access to the opportunities you can engage more people in sport and it's all completely free for everyone so it just means it's a really fun experience it's good it helps obviously us learn how to plan sessions how to deliver effectively especially it kind of goes alongside with the young leader thing it really helps just get those skills now so that when we progress we have the skills so if we want to go on to run our own guiding units or get more involved with girl guiding we have a really solid base and what all while encouraging that important message girls need to get involved and stay involved with sport so yeah that's pretty much what it is thank you so much um that was very very um passionate in fact every time I hear you speak about motivate your passion just is so infectious um mm -hmm. so thank you um okay so the final um opportunity that we want to talk about tonight is express and I'm just going to share my screen um and Chloe is also going to jump back in and um, talk a little bit about Express. Um, but Express is our youth forum. Um, and at the moment, they're meeting on Zoom, like lots of things are. Um, and they have been working on lots of great things. So if you've seen the region's 50th birthday challenge badge, um, all of the Express girls worked really hard to put that together. Um, so that's just one example of um, kind of one of the bigger region projects that um, Express members can be a part of. Um, and as it says here, if you are interested, um, there are reps for each county. So it's something that you need to kind of discuss with your county commissioner. Um, but I will hand over to Chloe, who will tell you a little bit more about um, the kind of the nitty gritty of Express. But that is essentially what it is. It's our region youth forum. I was the Express Chair for two years, two years ago now, I finished two years, and I was also the Cumbria North Express Rep um, two years prior to that. I got signed up because there was nobody in Cumbria North, and I just happened to be having a conversation with Julie Walton, who at the time was our County Commissioner, and she said, what are you doing on Sunday? No, Saturday, and I said, nothing. She goes, would you like a trip down to Region with me? I go, okay, and then that was the start of my four-year journey with Express, so... Express is great. You get to do lots of different things. So at that point, we were going to Mersey Mutant, um, which is Merseyside way, um, to join in with the activities there and um, can't think of the word, promote Express and what we did as a youth forum. In the, la in the two years I was chair, it was a great opportunity because it was a programme change. So we did a lot of national things as well on Express. So we did a lot of the program testing and putting our opinions forward on what we wanted things to happen. And along with the region strategy and the national strategy, we had a lot of input on that on what we wanted to happen as girls. In my final year, we changed the age range of Express. I'm assuming Rosie still does two reps per county. So we had one that were ranges and one that was, well, as it is now the Inspire group. So it was one rep for each age group. So we were covering both youth group sections in there. Um, Express is also a good opportunity if you need to do element four of your Queen's Guide Award. I know for some counties there are waiting lists for county reps, but they will be working on that. So your position usually lasts a year and then your county commissioner has to approve for you to go on to two years. Again, it depends if you've got a waiting list. If you've got a waiting list in your county, it will depend if the county wants to move people around. But it's a good opportunity to have reps on each county. So we also joined in with the region conference each year that they usually do in person, but unfortunately it hasn't happened this year, which is also a great opportunity because you get to meet your county commissioners if you haven't met them before. You also get to meet all the different people that work behind the scenes in region. And you get, they did, I think I still got them, a, a purple t-shirt with Express on so you can wear it out in the public. And there was a badge, but I think 
the badges finished because there was only a few left because Jess had got those. But it's a good opportunity to do if you want to put your voice forward and help shape the region. And through Express, there are also some county junior expresses you farms. I know Cumbria North had one because I set it up. Um, but currently, I think there's only me that was active in it. Um, but each county may have their own as well. But it's also a good opportunity to do. Thank you, Chloe. That is uh, much better than I could have done. Um, so that is our final um, opportunity that we wanted to share with you all tonight. Um, and I'm sure you can agree there is something for everybody there. Um, from being a young leader and, and volunteering and completing the young leadership qualification um, all the way through to being a sports young leader, completing your gold DV, your Queen's Guide. Um, it really doesn't matter what your interests are. There's an opportunity for everybody in guiding. Um, and as fantastic as being a young member is, being 14 to 18, I really, really would urge you to check out these opportunities beyond the unit. Um, dipping my toe outside of unit guiding was by far the best decision I ever made. Um, and I'm still in unit guiding and I still love unit guiding so much, but it's the extra things um, that have really, really helped me blossom. And as lots of people have said uh, and talked about, have been great things to put on my CV, on university applications, job applications, um, sort of anything extra that can make you stand out. And as well, it's you know, an incredibly enjoyable thing to do, all of these opportunities. Um, so I really hope that we've inspired lots of you tonight um, and people who will watch this recording later to go and explore some of the many opportunities. And even if you're a little bit nervous, um, just kind of push yourself out of your comfort zone, try something new, and I can promise you that you will not regret it. Um, it will be the best thing that you've ever done. So thank you very much to all of our speakers for, for coming and sharing um, their expertise. And thank you everyone for joining. Hopefully it's been, it's been useful. And if anyone has any questions, we will take them very quickly. Um, or if not, lots of people have shared their email addresses throughout this. Um, so you know how to get in touch if you think of any questions later. Um, but are there any questions very quickly? Um, Olivia says, this is for, uh, for Emma, um, how much does DV cost through guiding? Obviously you mentioned the... the um, to enrol on the actual award is £23 at bronze, £23 at silver and 30 at gold. And then the only other cost is the cost of the expedition. So that really varies from unit to unit, but it can be as little as maybe £20 for your bronze. The gold will cost more because you tend to go away for th further away and it's for longer. So it is really variable, but have a word with your local DV advisor. Quite a few units have DV leaders and counties have DV leaders. Hopefully that's answered most of the questions. Yeah, I think that does. And as you said, the fundraising is always there. One thing people are, are great at in guiding is fundraising. Any other questions? No? I think everyone was uh, gave really comprehensive um, explanations of, of the different opportunities. Um, but yeah, email addresses were shared. So do get in touch if you think of anything else. Um, and with that, I think we will, um, we will stop tonight. And oh, thank you, Linda. Um, I'm really glad that you learned a lot. Um, so yeah, we will end it. And thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Please do share these with like, your peers in guiding. If you're a ranger leader here, um, share it with your rangers. Um, just don't stop shouting out about all of the opportunities. So thank you.